For the past few years, we at the new Fly Fisher have been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to explore Chile. Chilean Patagonia, to be exact. With an unbelievable amount of fishable waters, the region in which we have been fishing has afforded us the opportunity to hunt new water in search of unrealized angling opportunities. There are fewer and fewer places anglers can do just that. Explore new water. The lake fishing here at Magic Waters Patagonia is unlike anything I've ever experienced. Yeah, this is all sight fishing, visual, big dry flies. Well, coming up on this episode of The New Fly Fisher, we're fishing out of Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge in southern Chile, searching for trout in small streams and small ponds and lagunas. Some known water and some brand new. I kind of look at the water and, you know, see how deep it is. What's the clarity? Are there any bugs hatching? The fish might be surface feeding. But honestly, Mark, what I'll almost always do is put on a dry dropper. And, you know, you got to cover a lot of water. So you got to keep moving and explore. Well, the weather's turned for the better, and uh, we have an opportunity to hit a bunch of lakes today, Tom. Uh, the lake fishing here at Magic Waters Patagonia is unlike anything I've ever experienced. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of lake fishing, but this is all sight fishing, visual, dry, big dry flies, sometimes streamers, yeah. but um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Wow. Wow, indeed. <laughs> That's a beast. The reason why it's called zero to hero is because generally most of the fish that you you catch here are huge. Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge, where fish like this are reality. This Chilean Patagonia big fish adventure starts right now on the new Fly Fisher. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. Absolutely fantastic. Mm. Nice. Oh my goodness, that's the kind of fish they make stickers out of. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Magic Waters Patagonia. Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge, owned by Consuelo and Eduardo Barueto, is strategically nestled in the foothills of the Andes Mountains. Home base for anglers looking for the quintessential traditional Chilean angling experience. Excellent fishing opportunities are literally steps away from the lodge, and the guide team with Magic Waters are experts in the area's lakes, rivers, streams, and spring creeks. With no amenity overlooked, expertly prepared chef meals are an experience unto themselves, and the hospitality is unmatched. This place is home away from home for many who return here year over year. We're here early season, late November to be exact. Things are warming up, and with that, the fish will be looking up. We're on our make for brown trout and rainbow trout in small waters. When many anglers think of lake fishing with a fly rod, some automatically think of fishing nymphs under an indicator. Many consider that a dull way to target fish. Fishing lakes in Chile throughout the season is anything but dull. Offerings of terrestrials, sometimes with a nymph dropper, is a visual and exciting method of targeting these fish. Explosive eats on the surface by predatory trout is always adrenaline-inducing. And in our experience of fishing both spring and fall in Chile, fish are more than willing to attack a terrestrial offering. Fishing streams and rivers are no different. Reaction eats in moving water more often than not will test most every angler's ability. On this adventure at Magic Waters Patagonia, we are targeting small streams, 
spring creeks, and small lakes and ponds, both from rafts and walk and wade. Joining me on this South American adventure is good friend Tom Rosenbauer. We get set up in the waiter room, stringing fly rods, and make the short drive to our first stream. A crystal clear flowage with lots of river structure. The best part, it's a new fishery in the Magic Waters arsenal. Guiding us today is Ives Barrientos. This is gonna be fun. Tom, small creek fly fishing, there's some considerations that you really should keep in mind before you put your fly in the water for the first time. What do you do when you come to a small stream for the first time? I kind of look at the water and you know see how deep it is, what's the clarity, are there any bugs hatching, the fish might be surface feeding. But honestly, Mark, what I'll gen almost always do is put on a dry dropper. Right. You know, put on a, a fairly large dry fly and a nymph and set the dropper fairly shallow because right. the, the stream isn't very deep and, and start there. If I get more fish on the nymph, then I just stay with dry dropper. If the fish are really responding to the dry, then I'll take the nymph off. And, right. and you know, you got to cover a lot of water. You do. In small streams, they're, they're not going to be everywhere. They're probably not going to be behind us here in this shallow riffle, but they might be up there in that a little bit deeper pocket. So you gotta keep moving and, and uh, you know, just explore. Right, so so two of the things that are important when you're first coming to a small stream is number one is observation. Don't just jump in right away and start fishing. You gotta watch and see what the river's telling you, what these fish are telling you. And number two is stealth. These fish, they live here. They know what shadows are supposed to be on the river at what time, and you have to be careful upon your approach. So stay back a bit, observe, and uh, do what Tom says. <laughs> Go wrong with that. We each tie on a dry dropper rig, each with a chubby Chernobyl and Perdigon dropper, and step into the river. Just a little fish, but look at that three weight bend. This is just so much fun with this little rod. Oh, a little bit bigger one. Woo! <laughs> Now, bigger fish, that little three-weight handled it just fine. You can put a lot of pressure with a three-weight rod. You can put a lot of pressure on a fish. You're not gonna break the tippet. I've got a fairly light tippet on here. That's a beautiful fish. What kind of rod do you pick for a small stream? Well, you can actually use any rod. You can use your standard nine-foot five-weight. I'm here at Magic Waters on a secret stream that I've never fished before. It's very small, it's clear, and I'm gonna have some fun today. My favorite small stream rod is this seven and a half for a three weight Helios. Now, it's a little windy today and I've got a fairly big dry fly on, but I'm not gonna to have to cast very far. This rod is so light, it's so much fun on even a small fish that I'm just gonna fish it because it's gonna be so much fun on a little stream like this. If I were in a big wide open river and I had to cast farther, nah, I wouldn't pick this rod. But in small water like this, this rod will actually just cast the leader for a really tight, close-in cast. And I'm not gonna be casting over 20 feet today, so I'm gonna have some fun with this seven and a half for a three-weight. It's got a brown trout, yeah. Oh, what a pretty brown. Look at the colors on that. Wow. Tom's lighting it up on this creek and I haven't seen a single bump. I make my way upstream to the confluence of the stream and a spring creek in hopes my luck will change. <laughs> We're fishing this little, this little run at the bottom of a, of a bit of a rapid here. And it looks like these fish are gonna be stacked up here. So we're gonna spend some time and weed our way through them and see what we can come up with. But small creek fishing in Patagonia, can't beat it. It is something special. They're getting better. That's a fat little guy. He's thick. Dark fish. Thanks for playing. 
on the dry. This is so fun. You know, tiny little spring creek, little stealthy action, well-placed fly, and these brown trout have come to play today. This is new water for Magic Waters, so we're exploring, and I'd say that this place definitely has potential. <laughs> so good. Oh, good fish. On the nymphs, small little split-tail copper john with a bead head, so it's getting down quickly. You've got to be quick in these deeper pools. You got to get out fast because you don't have much space for them. And so far, best fish of the day. Awesome, awesome brown trout. So here are the flies that I'm using on this. I've got a chubby Chernobyl, more like a beetle actually, here with a pink visual indicator so the angler can see it. And then about 12 to 14 inches below, I've got a flashback copper john with a split tail and a beet head. There is nothing better than a light little rod like this in a small stream. It's just so much fun. Doesn't matter how big the fish are, we hope for a big one. When the water's cold like this, keep in mind, this is springtime in Patagonia. Uh, we've got a lot of snow that's still coming off the mountains and the water's freezing. So when it's cold like this, um, you really need to pay attention to your dry. And what I mean by that is if there's ever any twitch or slight movement of your dry, chances are in this cold weather, cold water, it's a fish eating your nymph. Um, they're very, very, very subtle. Uh, their metabolism is super slow because the water's so cold. So when you're casting out, you need to keep your eyes on that dry the entire time. And anything that looks unnatural, just gently lift, because chances are it's going to be a brown trout or a rainbow. Just like that. So this is when a roll cast comes in super handy. When you don't have a back cast, you've got to get your fly in through a small hole, do a roll cast, and it opens up a whole lot more water for you to present those flies in. We decide to make our way upstream and come across an absolutely incredible waterfall. So this looks cool. Beautiful plunge pool. How do you want to fish it? Uh, why don't we tag team it? Okay. You're left-handed, why don't you go over there and I'll fish this side and um, we'll maybe get a double. Okay, do me a favor, before I cross over, yeah. throw one up the chute. Okay. So it's afternoon. Mark and I had an amazing morning on this secret little stream, very close to Magic Waters Lodge. And uh, we caught lots and lots and lots of fish, lots of action. Not any really big fish, maybe 14 inches, but we've just been having a ball. The only problem is that we're both fighting over this seven and a half foot three weight Helios because it's just the perfect rod for this. And it's so much fun catching those little fish on this rod. That's a nice little rainbow. When you're fishing a small fast stream like we're fishing today and you get a bend there's almost always a good pool where the river changes direction. And the natural inclination is to try to throw your fly against the far bank where you know it's deeper. The problem is that often, particularly in, in a stream like this, that water is too fast over there and the fish just aren't gonna hold. And you're gonna find a lot more trout on this inside seam here in this slower water. Now you might catch a fish over there, but it's gonna be really difficult to get a fly down. Um, and dry fly, they're not so inclined to come up through that faster water. So I would concentrate more on the, this inside slower water all the way down through the pool.
That's a better fish. Great fun on a three weight. We've had a fantastic morning fishing this creek and I decided to put a hopper dropper out and I was rewarded. Great, great rainbow out of a small glacial creek. Barbless hook just pops out. Awesome fish. What do you think about that? We fish the day away, releasing a bunch of rainbows and browns, head back to the lodge and prepare to do it all again tomorrow. It's day two here in Chilean Patagonia. Yves wants to keep with the small stream program and suggests we hit a small stream just five minutes from the lodge. We walk into the mouth where this tributary enters a much larger river and plan to fish back upstream. Tom starts early and is off to a great start. Netting a fish it is always chaos. It never works the way you want it to. You try to get them in the net, but it's gonna be messy. It's gonna be messy, especially if you're landing a fish by yourself. The one thing is once you get the fish in the net, both the angler and the fish can relax because you can see this, this big rainbow, you know, is moving around a little bit, but not thrashing not splashing, still wet, still getting water in its gills, but it's just um, just kind of chilling out there. And so you can chill and the fish can chill once you get them in the net. Good job. <laughs> nice brown. Was round? I think so. Okay, Tom, I'm gonna I'm gonna get him up so his head's to you, then I'm gonna back up. Okay. And you can scoop him. Okay. Nice. All right, so as you saw there, when you're fishing with a friend, communication helps with telling him what or her what you're gonna do in order to bring the fish to the net. So I told Tom that I was gonna back up once the head fish's head was up, and then he was there to scoop it in perfectly. No, he's still there. Took it, set, set, set. Oh, that's a big fish. So I'm trying to keep this big fish out of the weeds. And I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna use some side pressure here, but now I have to go the other way. And now I gotta lift up because there's weeds on the bottom. So I have to go. It's a big rainbow. Yeah, and it's wrapped around him too. Wrapped around her, there it goes. So now I'm gonna use side pressure here, I'm clear. And it's much easier to use side pressure to move that fish in the direction you want rather than going straight overhead. Now, when you get ready for the net, now I gotta use side pressure here. When you get ready for the net, then you wanna bring their head up. So I get about a rod's length of line out there, reach my hand back over my head, get the net in the water, and if I can get my short arms out there. There we go. Nice fish. Thank you for the spot, Mark. I didn't see that fish take the fly. We were about done, and I, was, I moved the dry fly indicator 
and the nymph moved and the fish took it. So you never know what's gonna work. We move upstream to a place well known by Ives to hold happy trout looking to eat dries. I tie on a parachute Adams and give it a try. We've come up to this awesome, awesome section of river. Um, as you can see, there's two foam lines that are running down below this log. Um, we've been watching this pool for, you know, a minute or two, and I've got two fish that are rising that I can see. Um, the, the conundrum, the question is, do I fish my way up to where I know there's feeding fish or do I go right for it? I think I'm gonna fish my way up and see if there's anything in the tail. If I do catch something down below, I'm gonna horse it out of the pool really quickly so as not to disturb anybody else. And then I'm gonna make my way up to where I think there's a big fish right by that log. Not as small as I thought it was gonna be. But again, we've got some debris that we need to negotiate here. I'm gonna pull this fish out of the pool, bring it down so as not to disturb anything else that's up on top. But I also don't want him to get into this faster water. So, ah, nice brown trout on a dry. Love it. But I still know there's a bigger fish feeding up there. And it's back to the pool. All right, let me show you the fly that caught that fish. This is a size 14 parachute Adams, one of the staples that every dry fly angler should have in their box. Um, they imitate so many different different bugs and, and fish just plain eat them. So Ives, see that hole right there under the lupin? I put a cast in, it got caught on one of the pieces of lupin and the fly was just touching the water. He came up and ate it, but I missed him. Yes. And about 25 casts later, I was able to put it right in the hole. Boom, Boom he ate it. So, small creeks in Patagonia often yield great rewards. How do you like that? <laughs> what a fish on a dry fly is <laughs> perfect. Where you have a confluence of two currents is always a good place. So we have a side channel up here coming into the main current. There's a nice foam line down the middle. Eves has said, this is where you usually sees fish rising. And we've seen a couple rise in here, right in that foam line, pegged to that foam line, which is where you're gonna find the fish. That's where the food is. So they're not really steadily rising, none of them. So what I'm gonna do is carefully work up that foam line and, with a dry fly and just hope that I can interest a fish to the dry. Don't go up there, I don't want you spooking the pool. change tactics. The fish were rising irregularly and they got a couple refusals and so put on a big dry, hung an imp from it. Eva said it would take one cast to catch a fish, it took two. Strong fish. Fish. 
I switched tactics. Yeah, I uh, couldn't get a fish on a dry, so I decided to try a nymph in there. This looks like such a perfect nymph run. Try to get downstream of this fish a little bit, get them upstream me, make them fight the current, and when they get downstream of you, the hook often pulls out. Oh, I think she is ready. Beautiful net job, thank you. Another fish just spooked out of the bank there. Really, where I stepped? Yeah, where you stepped. is really complex and there's all kinds of ways to fish it and um, I went through firstly with a, uh, a dry and a dropper and do anything switched it to a, a worm because you know that's what they're eating with all this rain didn't do anything and now went to something to take get an aggressive take and a streamer and I got this I saw a rainbow right in the back of the pool but there I know there's big ones in here for sure that's what this is a pool that I've fished before and, and caught lots of fish in it. And when we first got here, we didn't catch anything. And it, it's like, sometimes it's a 20 fish pool here at Magic Waters, kind of, a, kind of a secret little pool. So what I decided to do is put on a really, really long dropper and a big double tungsten stonefly so that I could get down in this faster water. And yeah, Euro nymphing probably would have worked, but I prefer to fish dry dropper. So I just added a really long dropper, tried to keep my fly line off the water, tried to just have a straight line to the indicator and then led it through those pockets. And um, it worked for a few fish. Just when you think you know something about fishing, the fish make a fool out of you. The water's running kind of fast here, but I figured the best water would be up here. I ignored that water down the tail. It looked like it was running too fast. Not only that, I was throwing my nymph upstream, dead drift, like you're supposed to, and as the fly came around way behind me, in fact, I think I was starting to move to another spot, the fly was just hanging in the current, and this big rainbow took it. Never rule out places or methods or flies because the trout are going to make a fool out of you as soon as you think you know something. What a way to end the day. Tomorrow we're off to hit some of the small lakes in the area for aggressive topwater trip. It's day three here in Chilean Patagonia. Once again, after a short drive from the lodge, we're at one of the many small lakes in the region. Well, the weather's turned for the better, and uh, we have an opportunity to hit a bunch of lakes today, Tom. Uh, the lake fishing here at Magic Waters Patagonia is unlike anything I've ever experienced. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of lake fishing, but this is all sight fishing, visual, dry, big dry flies, sometimes streamers. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. We've been here a couple of minutes and we've seen some dragonflies and some damselflies. So big, big, big offerings are the order of the day. You ready? Yep, All right, here I'm first. ready. Okay. okay. There we go. Ah, nice. You can see the lifting power of this D. There we go. Perfecto. 
Finalmente. Finalmente. Let's get a look at this fish. Oh, what a beautiful brown trout. Wow. Smash that damselfly on the surface. Beautiful. Oh, 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 right in front of us. Good call, Evis. Good call. Nice fish, too. Around that log, and his head is up, and yep. there he is. Yay. So that was really exciting. We had just released a fish, and we pulled into this rock here along shore and um, saw a fish rise out there. It was a smaller fish. Threw my fly out, twitched a couple times, and this much bigger trout just slammed that damsel fly. So it was a very, very exciting take right next to the boat on a dry fly. I managed to hook a nice brown, and guides Ives and Juan decide to pick up and move. They aren't happy with the way this lake is fishing. So we load up and drive another five minutes down the road to a new lake. There seems to be a misconception about among some fly anglers that fishing lakes is actually boring. Well, here in Chilean Patagonia, that could not be further from the truth. We're on this tiny little lake that's chock full of big brown trout and we're throwing giant dry flies to shoreline structure. The attacks are absolutely vicious and the fights match the attacks. So fishing lakes here in Chile is probably one of the more fun things that I like to do simply because you've got an opportunity to see visually these eats. I mean, it's absolutely stunning. Because where's the best spot for me to put the fly? Close to the reeds, around the logs, in every kind of water that look different to you might be an option. And fish it out a ways? Yes. Until like, probably try to fish like, I don't know, 10 feet from your cast. Okay. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> we had to work for him, but we got it. We got it. Oh, get out of that log. Wow, that's fun stuff, man. You know, it's windy. I've got a 10 foot six weight here. I'm really glad for that extra foot uh, because it allows me to really get that water walker bombed out there. Um, yeah, this guy came up and he's all wrapped up, but we got him. We got one in the hole, Ives. Oh yeah. Good job. There you go. Great slam brown trout. On a water walker? Perfect. <laughs> Another one. Yeah. This is incredible. Like I said, there's nothing like fishing Chilean lakes for high flying action, literally. These fish are torpedoing right out of the water. Eating these big offerings, these big dry flies. Now, one of the things that's important when you're fishing this way, and I just missed a fish because I didn't, I actually didn't do it properly is when the fish eats on the up motion, you can't set the hook. You have to wait until that fish is dropped back down into the water. If you set that hook while the fish is still in the air, you're gonna pull it out of its mouth every single time. And that's what happened on that fish before this. I got, ex I got excited and set the hook. Um, but if you can get them on the way down, chances are you'll connect and you'll be able to do, do the dance. Thank you, Ives. Oh, what a fish. What a fantastic fish. Oh my gosh, this thing's, this could fish. So it makes sense that, you know, there's a fish against this wall because we've got a massive wind blowing over our backs. Nice one and uh, everything, all bugs and anything that's in the water is being pushed up against here and then being peeled off to the back end of the lake. Now, if you'll notice, right in front of the boat is a foam line. And that foam line goes right down towards that water intake pipe. That's where that fish was. The fish was on the foam. So 
we all know when you're fishing rivers that, you know, fish the foam line because that's where the food is, that's the grocery aisle, but it's the same with lakes. If you can find a foam line, especially in a place where everything gets pushed up against a barrier, that's where the fish are gonna be hanging out. Nice job, Evis. Thank you, sir. Evis jumps back on the oars and I can handle this guy and get him safely back into the water. So this is a unique lake here at Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge in that I actually don't know the real name of the lake, but I know that it's referred to as Zero to Hero because you've got a chance at catching big fish here uh, on dries. And sometimes it's diamonds and some days it's dust. Wow. Wow, indeed. <laughs> That's a beast. Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge, where fish like this are reality. And we've been here this evening for a little bit and got one to eat a water walker. Now what's known about this place is that the reason why it's called Zero to Hero is because generally most of the fish that you, you catch here are huge, but it's the risk it's the risk you take. You know, it's one of those situations where you could spend a day here and, and not do anything, or you could spend a day here and catch a fish of a lifetime. This is something that is indicative of this lake and it can take you from zero to hero real quick. It's just fantastic on a dry. You can't beat it all day long. Equipment used on this small stream, small lake adventure is as follows. Tom was fishing streams with a seven foot three weight fly rod. I was fishing a nine foot five weight. Both using floating weight forward matching lines with small arbor reels. Leader material was nine foot and 12 foot tapered three X leaders, sometimes with four X and five X tippet. Fishing lakes, Tom and I were using nine foot six weight fly rods with floating matching lines and nine and 12 foot tapered three X leaders as well. Tomorrow is our final day at fishing at Magical Waters Patagonia Lodge. We're going on a bit of a drive to a small creek near Balmaceda. I got a question for you, Mr. Rosemeyer. Yeah. Would you like some wind with your brown trout? <laughs> <laughs> it's Patagonia, Mark. It is. So I noticed that you left the three weight at home. Yeah, um, today. Yeah, it's, it's a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you recommend for um, anglers that are coming to a place that's windy like this, especially on a day like today? Yeah, um, shorter, heavier tippet. You know, I think the water's a little dirty. We can get away with a heavier tippet. Shorter leader, you know, seven and a half to nine feet. You know, three X tippet maybe, because we're going to be fishing big dries and, and nymphs. Yeah, you got to shorten things up and keep your cast short. Right. You know, you don't want to try to boom out a long cast. The wind's going to take it where you don't want it to go. Right. So I've been fishing with a five weight all week, and I'm actually going to bump mine up to a six because of the wind. Yeah. Um, not because we're casting big flies, but because the backbone of the six will cut that wind a little better than a five. Yeah, you got a little you got a little more mass in your line. Right. So. Right. Right. Well, there's brown trout in this creek. Let's go see if we can meet some of them. I'm happy to do that. This morning we really struggled on this same creek and uh, the water temperature was about 44 degrees. Pretty cold for trout. Uh, so we waited a little bit, came up a little bit higher and the water temperature's gone up just a few degrees to like the, you know, 46, 47. And, but I sat down here in this pool and hooked three fish in a row. So just a little bit of increase in water temperature can really make a difference in, um, in your success.
Most people, I don't think, put enough pressure on a trout when they're fighting it. I mean, with modern tippets, uh, this is 4X on here. I can really put pressure on this fish. I'm not doing it right now, but it's really hard to break a fish off. You might pull the hook out of their mouth, but you can put a lot of pressure on a fish, you know, with a flexible rod. You can, you can really lead that fish around to wherever you want it to go. And people just don't use their rods. They don't use the shock absorbing power of their rods uh, the way they should. Because you can see, I can really steer this halfway decent fish around here. That was a strike. <laughs> Boy, these fish have gotten really active. Oh, you think? Yeah, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Man, what's that like, number six? <laughs> Question I get all the time is, if I catch one fish from a pool, does that spook the rest of the fish? Should I move on? And the answer is sometimes, but not always. And if you catch a fish out of a pool, it's a good place. You should try it for a number of uh, subsequent casts because I have been sitting here on the bank and have, I think, cooked seven or eight brown trout uh, without moving. So all from the same place. So it doesn't, uh, fish fighting doesn't necessarily spook the pool. Hang around for a while and see if you can get some other ones out of the same spot. I've been struggling all day here today in Chile. And that's what happens sometimes. You know, the weather's changed, whether it's angler error or barometric pressure or not holding my tongue right in my mouth. I don't know. But the secret to any sort of success is if something's not working, just change it. So Yves uh, said, let's go for a search pattern. Let's put a streamer on. Five minutes in, moved to fish, got one to eat. So we're gonna continue with a uh, cone-headed black flash streamer and uh, see if we can get some of these big trout to, to come up and respond. The skunk is off my back for now. Got this guy in the net. We can take a look at him. Great little small stream brown trout. Got him. Keep him out of that undercut bank. Bring him up so I can grab the leader on a small stream in Chile. Oh, grow up and get big, bud. Grow up and get big. That's the one. Nice. Oh, good fish. Woo! What a way to end the day at Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge. I've got to go. Yeah. And uh, take care of some personal business. Tom's going to keep fishing. So this is my last pool of the day. Oh, what a great brown trout. They are here. And you know what? If you put your time in and you try different techniques, don't give up. You'll see success. All right, Yves, I think he's ready. Ah, uh, good fish. You know, a lot of people are going to think that, you know, using something like a squirmy worm or a San Juan worm isn't fly fishing. But isn't fly fishing all about matching the hatch and feeding the fish what they would be eating naturally? We've had nothing but rain here at Magic Waters for the last number of days. The rivers are swollen and these worms are being washed down the river. That's what they're eating. So, it doesn't make a difference what it is. Match the hatch to catch big fish here in Patagonia. Oh, yeah, good one. Over on that shallow shelf over there. Now, I'm playing this fish. I'm trying to use side pressure to get him away from that log. And I only have 5X tippet on, it's pretty light. So I'm gonna try to slide the fish into this calmer water here and keep him away from the snags. This fish definitely wants to go back where he came from. Surprised he didn't want to go down into that log. Ooh, 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 ooh. Come on, come on. No, you don't. Don't go that way. That's it, right in here in this calm water. And notice I haven't used my reel at all. The fish hasn't really run, so I don't 
I don't need to use my reel. Slide the rod back over my shoulder and there he is. Ooh, good one. Whoa. So I don't have many snags in here, so I can use side pressure on this fish to, and then I have to lift up a little bit when it gets near this bank because there's some snags in here. But you can, you can steer a fish like this much easier by using side pressure rather than overhead pressure because the fish doesn't want to lift its head up. Yet when you go down and to the side, you can steer the fish and control it. They don't want their, they don't want their head to come up. That's the best way to tire a fish out. See how I can lead that fish right upstream and then lift his head when I'm ready to net him. And then just lean the rod back. Netting a fish is always messy. Well, that's about all the time we have for this episode of The New Fly Fisher. Thanks for watching. I want to thank all the guides, as well as Eduardo and Consuelo Barretto, for their guidance and hospitality during this epic small lake, small river, chilly adventure. Remember, adventure is out there. All you have to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? For more on the show, check us out at thenewflyfisher.com, as well as on all the socials. From everyone here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching. And hopefully we'll see you soon at Magic Waters Patagonia Lodge in Chilean Patagonia. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Magic Waters Patagonia. Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited. WeatherTech Canada.